for anybody you're trying to manage their insulin, you have to think in your mind, what am I trying to do exactly? Like, what is the normal physiology of insulin? Okay. And the normal physiology of insulin is the following. So if this is, you know, time throughout the day, um, and this is the insulin levels here on the Y axis. Okay. What happens during the day? Uh, you, you know, if this is, you know, you wake up right here, And then, you know, you're going to have breakfast. You're going to have lunch. And then you're going to have um, dinner. Okay. So what's going to happen is that you always have some sort of basal level of insulin. So you always have some sort of basal level of insulin that's always covering you throughout the day. Okay. Um, what happens is that after you, or once you eat breakfast, right, you get a spike of insulin and then it goes down to the baseline. And then after you have lunch, same thing happens. And after you have dinner, same thing happens. Okay. And then for some reason, if you take a snack or if by any time throughout the day, you get a hyperglycemic episode what happens is that you get a another spike of insulin okay so let's call them so the yellow one is basal or basal insulin and then the green one is you know associated with meal or meal associated insulin and then this blue one is you know what do you want to call it? Uh, reactionary or, you know, it's a reaction or compensatory insulin. If you understand this, if you understand this basic principle, then management of insulin in the inpatient will be very simple. Okay. Which means if somebody is admitted to the hospital, so patient um, with diabetes admitted. Okay. You're going to understand that you can either continue their home medications, like let's say they are type 2 diabetics and they're on metformin at home. You can continue the metformin. Although, as I mentioned in previously, you know, a lot of the times people don't like to continue the metformin uh, because there is a very small risk, theoretical risk, of um, having uh, lactic acidosis in the setting of sepsis. But when somebody is admitted to the hospital, for all intents and purposes, you're going to, you know, switch, you know, start them uh, on insulin management. Okay. For the diabetes. And just like the normal physiology here that we talked about, you have three types of insulin management in the hospital. Okay. The three types are, number one, basal insulin. Okay, and this basal insulin is usually a long-acting, long-acting insulin. You give them insulin that is long-acting, that covers them throughout the day, okay? Number two, the meal insulin, instead of giving it at the meal, you give it before the meal. So we call it a pre-meal, pre-meal insulin. And this is usually an intermediate acting, you know, like a, a, like regular insulin, you know, intermediate acting, which means the half-life of it is not throughout 24 hours, okay? And then finally, there's these spikes that happen throughout the day, you get hyperglycemic, um, then what do you cover them with? Here I call it reactionary. In the real world, we call it a sliding scale, okay? Insulin. And this is usually short-acting. This is what you give as a compensatory, as a reactionary to somebody who is hyperglycemic. Okay, so when you see a patient who is diabetic, what you want to do is you can, you know, you can either, you can either be proactive in the management, which means you can be like, this patient needs insulin. I'm going to cover them with the basal. I'm going to cover them with the pre-meal. I'm then going to cover them with the sliding, with the sliding scale. 
okay? You can do that. Or you can be reactive, not proactive, which means what you can do, you can be, uh, you can say, I'm going to put them on a sliding scale and then see how they do. And then throughout the day, at the end of the day or tomorrow morning, I'll calculate how much insulin they needed. And then I'll give them that as a basal, as a long acting. Okay. So again, there is like kind of two schools of thought, either, you know, proactive or reactive. Okay. Um, let's say you want to be proactive and you're like, you know, you're, you're, you're really good about what you're doing. Um, then how are you gonna, how are you gonna give them the insulin? This gets a little kind of basic stuff. Um, but essentially what you need to give them is, um, you know, anywhere between depending again, depending if they're type one or type two, and I don't memorize the numbers off the top of my head, but it's around, you know, 0.5 to one unit per kilogram per day, essentially the total insulin they're going to get throughout the day, something around that. Okay. And this total amount, this total amount. So let's say this is the total amount of insulin. Then what you're going to do is, you know, uh, you know, half of it, you're going to give it as, you know, um, as basal insulin, and then, you know, um, the rest of it, you're going to give it like pre-meal, something like that, or two thirds, thirds, like whatever. This is, there is like specific kind of percentages of how much you give, but, you know, it depends on, on the person. Um, if you're type one diabetic, think of it this way, if type one diabetic, would you go lower insulin or higher insulin? Like, the type 1 diabetic, would you give them the 0.5 or higher. would you give them the 1? Higher. Because they, they don't have any insulin. That's what you would like think, but it's actually the opposite. Again, think of it this way. Patients who are type 2 diabetics, they are resistant to insulin, which means they require more insulin to, uh, to react, to act on, on the cells. While type 1 diabetic, they're insulin deficient. So any insulin they get, they're very sensitive to insulin. So it's uh, the other way around. So uh, usually, you know, type one diabetics, you, you stay lower and type two, you go higher. Okay. So this is, this is the way you do it. Um, now you have to kind of know which type of insulin uh, you're going to give. Okay. Because um, there are multiple types of insulin. The ones uh, you're going to have to know is the long acting or the basal insulin here we talked about. And these can be um, either, you know, you, you heard about glargine insulin, um, which is like the long acting is like a 24 hour. Um, or there is um, Levimir insulin. This is a BID. This is uh, twice a day. It's given twice a day. It's Q12 hours. Okay. So this one Q daily or usually you can give it at night or something and that will cover them. Okay. Then the pre-meal insulin, it's, it's going to be either, you know, regular, no one really used regular insulin or you can use a uh, Novolog insulin. Uh, and the sliding scale, I mean, usually it's like the short acting. Sometimes they use Novolog or like regular insulin. By the way, there's another insulin you should know about uh, called NPH insulin. And this is like a mixture, 70-30 of basal plus. It's fine. You don't need to know it. This, we never use it in the hospital. You know, don't use it in the hospital. This is like outpatient setting. Um, and then the short acting. Uh, what I want you to know is if you're going to go reactive, okay, which is what most people, by the way, most people will do that. Most, so very little people will go pro proactive. Most people will do reactive because it's easier. You know, it's just easier. How is it easier? For reactive, you're just going to start sliding scale. Okay. For you to understand what the hell is a sliding scale, I don't know. Like, for example, for me in medical school, like I always used to see the word sliding scale. I had no idea what it means. It's very, very simple. Okay. So a sliding scale is essentially a protocol. A protocol that tells you if glucose is X, give 
Y units of insulin. That's the protocol, okay? And the protocol is modified into three types. There is the low dose, there is the medium dose, and there is the high dose. Again, question for you. Who gets low dose sliding scale? Who gets high dose sliding scale? And what, what high dose, low dose means, it means you will give more insulin. You will, you will give a lot of insulin for any change in glucose. So type 1 or type 2 diabetics get low or high dose? What do you think? Should we just like the proactive protocol? It's very similar. So type 1 diabetics get the low dose. Type 2 diabetics, you can either do medium or high. Okay? Never put a type 1 diabetic on a moderate or medium or high dose sliding scale because what's going to happen is you're going to give them a lot of insulin for a change in glucose. They're going to become hypoglycemic. Okay? Um, so essentially when you choose this, this is an EMR, you know, an EMR order set. You just kind of, you know, tick, you know, you just choose it and you sign it and then you order it. Okay? Now, one more thing you have to be careful of Let's say you choose one of these, and then patient becomes hypoglycemic. What are you going to do? How are you going to mitigate the hypoglycemia? So if somebody is hypoglycemic, what can you do? How can you... It's like um, ask them to drink any juice or, okay. or whatever. Yeah, sure. Or, apple um, juice. Decrease, decrease the subsequent dose. Okay, you've got apple juice. Uh, probably you want to go down on the insulin scale. Right? You can also give them D50, which is dextrose. Right? To get him up. And, very important, you can give them glucagon. Okay? So, this protocol right here, Again, this is not with your own volition. This is an actual order, order set called hypoglycemia protocol. And again, these all protocols, nursing are very good about it. They have parameters. Once they measure the, you know, the finger stick, Q4 hours, whatever, then they will act upon it. And the protocol is very well structured in most hospitals, okay? So from your end, it's very easy. Ask, yeah. Um, like at what uh, level do you give glucagon? Like how low would the sugar go it, before? It would be glucagon? like pretty low sugar, like when it's 40 or something. All right, thank you. Question, what's your goal? What's your glucose goal in the hospital? Outpatient, what's your glucose goal? The outpatient, you know, around 100, you know, one less than 100. How about in the hospital? Like not around too, 150. Around 150. Like, I think it's 140 to 180, something kind of those lines. Good. So you don't want to get it too low, okay? So you, you, in general, you target 180. And the reason you target 180 is because there was a big trial that compared strict in, uh, strict glucose control versus liberal glucose control in the hospital setting, and they found people with strict glucose control had higher mortality, okay? And, you know, that's why you don't want to target too low. If you target too low, if target um, like 100, you will have higher hypoglycemic episodes, and the hypoglycemic episodes is really what kills you. And that's what increases the mortality in these people. So you really want to be liberal in terms of... And again, all these parameters are usually set into the sliding scale. Now, if you chose to go into a reactive sliding scale protocol, what you're going to do is the following day, calculate the total insulin that the patient got in the day prior. 
So you're going to calculate, hey, the patient received a, a total of like, let's say 50 units of insulin. So what you're going to do is these 50 units, now these are, so this number now is your magic number. And then you, you know, you, you, you give it like, I don't know, give two thirds of it as long acting. And then, you know, give one third as, you know, pre-meal. So you're going to, what you're going to do is you're going to give, I don't know, what's two thirds of 50? 40? No, 30? <laughs> I screwed up here. Let's say 30. Okay, you're, let's say you're, you're going to give 30 units glargine insulin, QHS, just before sleep or in the morning. And then the 20 you're going to break it into, um, I don't know, uh, let's say 777 units of Novolog pre-meals. Okay. And then the following, the following day, what's going to happen, okay, what's going to happen is going to, you're going to use the goal. Your goal is use zero units of sliding scale. And then cause zero hypoglycemic episodes. Okay, so think about it, right? If you achieve this goal, it means that your insulin management is perfect because you gave the patient exactly, exactly what their body, what their body needed like this. And you did not have to use any, you know, extra insulin. They were never hyperglycemic. They were never hypoglycemic. You just manage it perfectly. So most people will use this. They will start people, they will start patients on sliding scale. They will put them on moderate or high or, or low if they're type one diabetics. And then they're gonna add the hypoglycemia protocol. And then you're gonna, by default, target a 180. And then the following day, you're gonna calculate. This is the tough part, is to calculate and then switch all the sliding scale. I mean, keep the sliding scale, but add the long acting the following day and give them the pre-meals. And then the following day you will look how much sliding scale you used.